we don't talk about Finster like a lot on this show. It was recently a big news item that Finster finally came out as genderqueer. So Finster is a streamer on Twitch who has for years been kind of playing a game with her audience going like, yeah, I'm just a man who's cross-dressing and wearing makeup and has long hair and dresses really feminine. And, and like, it's been kind of a tease, teasing kind of game back and forth relationship where like Finster has been doing this cross-dressing shtick for a long time. And I think at one point even had locked all of their like boy clothes, like all of his boy clothes in a chest. And like every time someone donated a certain amount, it would add an amount of time to how long it was going to be stuck in the chest, like how long all those clothes were going to be in there. Um, and then finally, Finster came out and said, I'm genderqueer. I'm still figuring this stuff out as far as the explicit labels and the identity and everything. But she announced that she's going on hormones or had already gone on hormones like a few months ago. It had never occurred to him to transition because I think that it was mostly just a game that she was doing for her like mostly cishet Twitch audience. And then more and more trans people started circling, like cycling in. And so she got more and more exposure to that. And that's why he's at this point now where he's on HRT and basically still is like, I'm kind of a man just goofing around with gender, but I am functionally gender fluid. And yeah, it's great. We love to see it, frankly. Um, and hopefully that puts an end to a lot of the speculation because People were speculating a lot about, ooh, is Finster actually trans? Like, ooh, if you're doing this cross-dressing shtick, ooh, you must have something actually going on. And, you know, I generally try to avoid that. I'm kind of, I tend to err on the side of, like, not wanting to make people in the public eye feel like people are investigating their private life, you know? Because it's uncomfortable as a creator to feel like people are trying to figure out what's going on with you, especially if it's something you're not ready to talk about yet. Like, if you haven't come out, then it's because you're not ready to talk about it yet. So be chill, right? But anyway, the existence of Finster and the recent news about her coming out as gender fluid was not the point of today's segment. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. Maybe subscribe, hit all notifications if you want. Feel free to check out the links in the description. You might find some merch you like. Or you can hit up the Patreon to support the content and find free stuff. The point of today's segment is that Finster was doxxed in the Times. Finster says, the Times just doxxed my full name in an article to slander trans healthcare donations. So let's check this out. Archived. Puberty blocker clinic accepted $20,000, 20,000, wow, 20,000 pound donation from Sugar Daddy. Gender GP is a private clinic that pre prescribes hormones to young people and adults and it circumvents the NHS ban on puberty blockers on the drugs um, because it is privately owned. So it's kind of a big deal. The NHS just made puberty blockers like not covered under their program for trans youth anymore. So functionally, because the process over there for teens works, like you get puberty blockers and then cross sex hormones, effectively, they've just said, yeah, well, on the public option, we're not providing any gender affirming medical care to anyone under the age of 18. Like, don't even bother getting on a wait list until you're 18, effectively. Privately owned clinics are not bound by those same rules, which means that you, if you are able to afford it and you're willing to wait on their wait list, you can go to Gender GP Clinic and get puberty blockers for your teenager. Now, I will also say, that we covered an article last year about how if you and your family are seeking transition related care for a teenager at a private clinic, that might be justification for the government to open basically a wellness investigation and, and like check and see how things are going. So just because private healthcare is hypothetically available, it doesn't mean that you'll be able to just access it without any government interference, even though you're deliberately trying to seek something that the government is like, well, we've decided that we don't want to cover it. The taxpayer doesn't want to deal with this burden or whatever. Like, I don't know what the excuse is. It's horrific that trans youth in the entire country, this is one of the benefits of living in the U.S. is that we don't have countrywide bans 
like this for the most part. You can't just declare that this type of health care is not going to be covered and also will investigate your family. Like, at least you can't do it countrywide. It goes region by region. So every trans kid in the UK is affected by this and it sucks. So Finster donated money to the private clinic. This private clinic has, quote, vowed to defy an NHS directive banning the prescription of puberty blockers to children. They accepted a 20,000 pound donation from a, quote, sugar daddy who paid a male YouTuber, that's Finster, thousands of pounds to behave like a submissive girl. True. So Gender GP has, yeah, provided children as young as nine with drugs that suppress puberty blocker, like puberty hormones. That's scaremongering. Like, ooh, they provided children as young as nine with these drugs, but it's like the quote unquote drugs were developed for the use of like stopping precocious puberty. I think that the youngest ever recorded instance of a person being prescribed puberty blockers for precocious puberty was like a nine month old baby, like a freak situation. Um, I haven't, I haven't looked into it really in depth. That sounds like really intense, but I'm just saying like the point of the medicine originally is to stop precocious puberty. And if that's happening at age six, then you give them the medicine until a normal appropriate time for them to start puberty. And then you just take them off the medicine and the puberty will resume. But yeah, it's like, Ooh, children as young as nine, like, okay, and so why? Who cares? So Gender GP said that the company will not be following the NHS guideline after medical leaders concluded that, quote, there is not enough evidence to support the safety or clinical effectiveness of the drugs. Again, we've been using these drugs for like longer than I've been alive and I'm about to turn 30. Yes, there's a loophole in the guidelines saying that they can be provided by private providers. As a private company, Gender GP is financed through fees paid by the families of children wishing to change their gender and does not receive charitable donations or public funding. However, the clinic does accept donations for a fund it set up to help those who are struggling to pay for their treatment. So you can't donate directly to Gender GP, but you can donate to a fund that then helps people be able to afford the care if they can't afford it. That's awesome. So among those who have given money to the fund is this anonymous American donor, the quote unquote sugar daddy from the title, who gave $25,000 or 20,000 euro or pounds or whatever the hell that symbol is, as part of a joint donation, along with British YouTuber Finster, whom he paid to be his online sugar baby. So uh, I actually think that Finster matched this donation, but I think that Finster said, you know, really dislike political stuff, but I made this donation without fundraising to help trans kids in the UK who couldn't afford healthcare. Having said that, I have no problem with puberty blockers being prescribed to give people a better life. Yeah, because uh, this article is claiming that gender GP primary, like only serves children, but it, I think is for anybody who is on the wait list for too long and can afford it. Like, I think that adults can, um, I don't think there's any rule that says that adults can't go there. But yeah, Finster continues, I will happily pledge the entire donation amount again, plus what was matched by my viewer at the time. And for the journalist that asked for my quote three hours before the article released, my official quote is suck my ass. Oh, we love Finster. The total donation would have been 40,000, which is pretty great. Imagine just like, yeah, having, having a cool 20K to give to someone. This goes, this article is so funny because it's like, it's such scaremongering. The donor who goes by the pseudonym Tenmises gave Finster, the YouTuber from Birmingham with over half a million subscribers, thousands of pounds to undergo laser hair removal, wear an outfit with the words daddy's princess written on it and sit in a child's chair when he disobeyed his commands. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, yeah, people do silly shit on the internet. Like you're trying to link this idea of degeneracy to what's happening at Gender GP, and it's real dumb. Uh, aren't they still gonna provide them for precocious puberty? Probably, it, you know, and that's why it's great that we have the protection of the 14th Amendment in the US because that's the argument that ends up being used when these laws pass that restrict access to puberty blockers for trans kids, but allow them for cis kids with precocious puberty. You know, under the law, you have to treat everybody the same. So you can't legally say you can dis you can give this medicine to this type of person but you can't give this medicine to this other type of person because of the type of person they are which i think is why they do the other thing that we're going to be covering today as of this stream which is that states are increasingly trying to 
basically legally define trans people out of the law to say, you know, there is no such thing as gender. It is only sex based, whatever. So, you know, if you discriminate against a woman for something about being a woman, that's fine. But if, you know, the way that they would phrase it is like, if a woman decides to start acting like a man, she doesn't suddenly, you know, get to claim sex discrimination as that, whatever. So that's why they try to take away that protection. But in the UK, you don't have that equal protection under the law thing. So you can basically have a different standard for people on the NHS. Like maybe even in the rules, it's technically not supposed to be a different standard. But just like they told Abigail when she was trying to get her medical care figured out, basically they know that the wait lists are incredibly long and they have no intention of fixing the situation. Like they're at a certain point, there isn't anyone hired to appeal to because people at the highest level of the NHS want there to be a segregated system. In the UK, we've got the Equality Act from 2010, but that's pretty much exclusively for workplace discrimination, I think. Yeah, and the UK has no constitution, so... Uh, um, okay, so this article continues. Tenmas is also offered Finster money to strip on camera and undergo, uh, uh, undergo breast implant surgery, both of which Finster declined to do. So, yeah, I guess the docs is already out there and Finster tweeted it, so it's like not bad if I show the docs or say the docs, but they put the real name out there and their age. They initially grew an online following by making videos about computer games. She began wearing female clothing after telling her followers that he would do so if he received $1,000 in donations from them. <laughs> so yeah, this just goes in to that other detail. Uh, that we are already talking about. Oh, did he, did this person dox the, the chatter as well? Gender GP did confirm that it had been the recipient of the donation, posting on the website that the, that Tenmas's and quote, one of his good friends had given them $50,000 in total. Yeah, so Finster matched the $25,000. Neither the clinic nor the donator ha responded to requests for comment. These have been prescribed to hundreds of under 16s on the NHS since 2011 at the Gender Identity Clinic run by Tavistock. Oh, a review of the Tavistock Clinic re warned that puberty blockers may quote permanently disrupt brain development and quote lock in children to an irreversible life-altering path of cross-sex hormone treatment. Because again, listen, if almost 100% of the kids that you put on puberty blockers go on to take cross-sex hormones, that doesn't mean that starting puberty blockers is starting on a life-altering unstoppable path. It means that all of the psychological testing and double checking and multidisciplinary team working together before the puberty blockers started, they did such a good job of weeding people out in that first phase that they have almost a hundred percent success rate in choosing kids that are actually trans who take the blockers and then go on to do cross sex hormones and remain trans into their adulthood. Frankly, this is a point that someone made on one of my comment uh, in the comments of one of my videos recently. Honestly, the fact that the detransition rate is as low as it is is kind of almost like a horrific indictment on how we do trans care because basically, you know, the only people who are able to get trans care or like 98% of the people who get access to trans care have to persistently go through a rigorous very expensive often process like that the detransition rate kind of should be higher because it should be easier to access like it doesn't necessarily say the way we're doing this is good unless your goal is to have like few trans people or few detransitioners i don't think that detransitioners are a thing that we should inherently be trying to avoid per se because like the price of freedom is that you take on risk why are we trying to police people's ability to take on risk? That's just not how we do things in America. Or it's not supposed to be. Yeah, cisgender kids who go on puberty blockers don't, you know, have a, like a lifetime permanently disrupted brain development. So this British newspaper just casually doxing Finster, whose name was not public before this, and which I look forward to promptly forgetting. Equal protection is specifically to address that they knew that the South would discriminate against Black people in the Reconstruction era. That makes perfect sense was not intended with trans people in mind and that's the thing that is annoying is that suddenly now in america we have this ooh you know that wasn't the founder's intention of course they weren't thinking about 
transgender people. So are you going to try to say that the 14th Amendment doesn't apply to trans people because being trans is not, quote, rooted in this nation's history? Finn has mentioned her actual name on videos, but this article is still super malicious, right? The thing, too, is I think people will sometimes say, oh, it can't be doxing if the information was already public. But doxing, like the first instances of doxing that I ever heard of, things that are ostensibly public, like if you... If you buy a house, the fact that you own it is technically public knowledge, but you would have to go digging to find it. So if you happen to know someone's full name and you go searching for the appropriate public records, you can dox someone. I know someone who had to move into a, she owned her house and had to move into a different house. And like, I think that they ended up putting only her husband's name on the new house so that they wouldn't be like found in person, like their address was technically public, but you did have to go searching for it and then taking that information and publicizing it to a broader audience when, you know, oh, all these hundreds or maybe even thousands of people who they themselves would not have done the work to find your address, but now they have easy access to it. And they might be the kind of person who sends you like a dead animal <laughs> in the mail, you know? Much love to my patrons, especially Tiago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Michelle Frateroli, Amanda B, Wellington Marcus, Michelle Winter, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Pastnell Infinity, Nova, Sojo, Elizabeth Bartell, Ella V. Nobody, Kevin Young, Sarah A, Athiet, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, and Mr. Atheist.